Hey everybody, I wanted to show you a package that came to me today. Um, I was about to open it, but I realized, hey, you know what, might as well shoot a video of it. So I've never had a Kara's pen come to me in a tube before. Um, and uh, here it is. Um, the only thing I've done so far is I've cut the tape off the end. You can see that there's tape on this end and tape on this end. There was tape on this end and I cut it off. We'll pull this little th thing out. Looks like there's some paper in there. Pull that out. Nothing in that. Let's see. Oh, oh. Look at that. Okay, we'll leave that for a second. Let's see what else is in here. There's some more stuff in there. Off camera for a second. Oh, look. So, uh, uh, Kara's has done a special um, to commemorate the... Pony Express, and it comes with a poster of sorts that was wrapped in paper to keep it safe, and in the tube, and that explains the tube, by the way, and the Pony Express is a nice, I don't know if this is laminated or it's just nice uh, glossy paper that details the route of the Pony Express riders. Um, and it looks very vintage, um, done at least in a vintage style. Um, <clears throat> but the Pony Express is one of those things that uh, has lived in myth and legend for um, for quite some time from the American West, and uh, it it ran for a very short period of time from the. <clears throat> For about a year and a half, um, and it was replaced by, of course, the railroad and stagecoach and other things that came in that were uh, more reliable and quite a bit uh, safer and less expensive uh, for shipping letters from one end of our country to the other. Um, of course, you know, the Pony Express riders didn't ride from one end to the country to the other, but they rode from a basically where uh, the railroads ended in St. Joe or St. Joseph, uh, Missouri, and, uh, and then they would ride on stages uh, where they would have a horse waiting for them and then they would ride um, all the way across and all these dotted lines and all these names of these places these are all places where they would stop and switch horses um, to get a letter from one end of their route to the other um, all the way to um, Sacramento California um, anyway so it comes with this bit of a map here and Library of Congress date given on there from, from 1954. It's kind of an interesting uh, print. I kind of like it. Um, it's long and skinny, but anyway, um, there's that. And then um, the pen. So the the Kairos pen has done a video on this. They've talked about the pen and what it looks like and what it's made of. And it's a uh, an ink pen. Let's see, it was wrapped in that paper. And then inside of that, there's a card. Um... It, it gives the the, the nib and uh, gives a couple of uh, black, I think they're Monteverdi, but I'm not sure, black ink cartridges. Well, you know, let's just look at that real fast. And if you hear noise in the background, uh, we are still under lockdown in the, the coronavirus. And I've got six adults in my house, and it gets kind of noisy. Anyway, those are the... And we have a Keras Penco... Type 250, which is a large number six nib from Bach, and it's a 14 karat gold extra fine flex, and it's been tested by one of their folks there. And this is a much plainer box um, than most of the Kara's pens come in, and it's smaller, of course, so it could fit in that tube, I assume. Thanking us for our purchase. Oh, this one includes a polishing cloth. I didn't realize that that was going to happen. Um, I might have to look for that. I hope it's not in that ball of paper I just tossed. Um, but to remove the surface tarnish from this pen, because it is an interesting pen. Um, it is made out of a different material than what they have used. Dad? Um, and it's made out of a different material uh, than they've used in the past. Uh, we've got the pen is sealed up in this plastic tube. And, oh... I have a knife around here somewhere. Cut her open. And 
inside is the pen. And the pen, as they described in the video, is made out of bronze rather than copper or brass. And the clip, instead of being made out of stainless steel, um, is made out of titanium. Uh, time will tell. It seems to be a little springier um, than the clips in the past. And uh, that's a very different feel. There is an O-ring in that cap, and I can feel it. it. It's got a very different capping feel. The section is a different shape. It's not quite as long. It doesn't have the deep recess for the nib. And this is a nib I have never seen before, but a flex nib in 14 karat from Bach. Oh my goodness, look at that. Well, that's going to be fun to explore once we ink it up and use it. Standard Bach feed. The nice machine work that they always do there. Looks like it was tested, and you can see the residue of the ink testing. But this is different because it's got this flat spot right here that an O-ring rides on. And I don't see the O-ring, but I, oh, there it is, that red O-ring up in there, which is a new addition to the, this, the new model of ink pens, and this is the first of them. The, the threads there are much flatter. That's an interesting change, too. But... Let's see how many turns it takes to open it. That's one and a half, and I can feel it about to give, yeah, so about one and a half turns, which is nice, and that O-ring makes it really stick. No worries about this thing coming open on you. Anyway, so this is the new pen, um, and it comes with some stamps. Wow, these look like the real deal. Or are, the, are they copies? Boy, I should go back and watch that video again. But it comes with a pair of stamps and uh, that artwork. I was going to look in the box and see if the polishing cloth is in there. Well, it's got to be in somewhere else in the box, and I'll find it. But Awesome. Anyway, that's uh, just all I wanted to do was do a, um, show an unboxing of this pen. Um, I'll do another uh, video soon where I ink it up and I compare it to my other ink pen and hopefully uh, show you how well it works. Thanks. Bye.